you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe a single 8,991 line React component is just fine. Or maybe you agree with me that around the 100 to 500 line mark is where you want to think about refactoring a single component into smaller components. Or maybe it's not really about line count at all, but about a component having a single specific task and reducing complexity. Honestly, there are no hard and fast rules, but what I had in mind when I made that poll and when I was thinking about big components, I was thinking about a specific scenario that I see a lot of. And that's where folks get handed a page size block of HTML from a designer or from Figma or from some template. And it's like, here, you know, implement this. Now you could take that huge ball of HTML and factor it into reasonably sized components. What? That's going to take forever. Just put it all into a single component and boom, you're done. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it turns out performance is what could go wrong. And there's one path that looks good, really good, but it turns out to be a huge React no-no. So I'm going to show you how to avoid all of that, make performant components, make them right-sized the right way. Let's get right into it. So the example I'm going to use is over on the Tailwind UI site. This is a good looking page, I got to say. When we have a look at the code, it is exactly one big component. You can see here, example as a component, it's got some use state up at the top, and then it's just literally tons and tons and tons of JSX. So this is not great, but we're going to try it. We're going to take all this and put it into Next.js and see how it goes. So I've taken all that code, I took out a little comment that they had at the top, I put in all of their dependencies, I took out some data that was in there. That is not particularly fair to go and assess the size of things, having all this data in there. So this is now just really this one little helper function, class names, and the huge homepage mega function, which I think at this point is around, is around, well, it ends on 887. And it starts on line 32 all the way back here. So if I'm doing my math right, that's about 855 lines of code, which is pretty crazy. Oh, another thing I've done is I've implemented the cart in there as well. And that's just because I want to kind of show off the issue of having a component this big. So I'm going to go into that starter directory and I'm going to run dev. Of course, all of this code is available to you for free on GitHub in a link in the description right down below. Now I've got it up in my arc, and I got to say, it looks good. And when I click around, there's no flicker. Things look good. But if I bring up our React developer tools, and I make sure that as a setting, in under general, I have highlight updates when components re-render set, as I click around, you can start to see a problem. The entire page, and you can see that with these blue boxes, is actually getting re-rendered every single time. And well, why is that? Well, let's go back in our code. Well, the answer is pretty simple. We have a single component and we have all this state and whenever any state changes inside of a component, then the entire component is re-rendered. So our entire page is getting re-rendered on any change, whether we change the selected color or we add something to the cart or we open and close the menus, everything is going to cause an entire page refresh. So how can we fix that? So in the second example, nesting do not do, if we look in the page, and you can see I put a comment right at the top. It says, do not do this, and I really, really, really mean it. Please do not come away from this video thinking that this is the right thing to do in your React components. So we take a look down in the home page, and we can start to see the problem. So we've broken this component up into smaller components, like mobile links is a component that just handles mobile links. That's great. But here's the trap that a lot of folks fall into. Instead of declaring components externally to the function, they declare the components inside the main component. And this is a huge React no-no. Even the React docs call out this in particular. So let me show you why this is a problem. Now watch. See this flicker? Not only is the entire page getting rebuilt every single time I click around because the state's changing, you can also see that image flicker. And why is that? So what's happening is that the entire page is getting rebuilt because React is getting a fresh new set of component definitions 
every time this component re-renders. So it looks, for example, at mobile links and says, well, the references to the original mobile links component and the new mobile links component are different. Therefore, I'm actually going to go and just re-render everything. So it's actually worse to do it this way than to do it the original way in terms of performance. And if that weren't enough, all of that state is still in the parent homepage component, and we're sharing it without using props or context, which is basically getting around all of the mechanisms baked into React, and it's not what they expect you to do. So as I say, in multiple places, do not do this. This is a trap. Instead, what we want to do is define components externally, but if you like, still in that same file. So let's go take a look at that example. So that example is under 03 reasonable. And now if we take a look at this implementation, we can see that all those components are in their own functions still in the same file. And this works a lot better. And in particular, let me show you two components that work really great in this model. So let's bring, so let's bring back our dev tools. And now let's add to cart. And as we can see, the entire page gets updated. That's not great. But these two components, the color picker and the size picker, are awesome because their state is local to their component. So when we make changes, we get fine-grained updating. They only update the component that the state is attached to. So it's a very fine-grained update. And that's what we're really looking for from a good React application. But let's add a cart. It still re-renders everything. So why is that the case? Well, we look at the implementation of home page all the way down at the bottom here. We can see that we still have the state for the open and closed state of the menu, as well as the cart up in the home page component. So that's gonna be a problem. And that's why when you hit add to cart, we're getting an entire page refresh because the cart data is associated with the home page component. And it's the home page component that needs to re-render when that state changes. So how can we fix that? To fix that, we can bring in the Zustand State Management Library. I'll show you over here in 04 Global State. So here we're bringing in Create from Zustand. And then we're using that to create two new mini global stores. They're not actually global because they're just here in this file, but they are external to React. The first is use menu open. It has an open and a set open flag, just like you would with use date. And then we got the cart where you've got the cart count and then the add to cart function that just adds something to the cart. So let's actually try this out and see how it works. All right, let's try out the size changer. It still looks good. And that's because the state is held local to those particular components. But now if I hit add to cart, we can see that only the header updates because it's the header that is subscribed to that cart count. So we reduced the size of that re-render from the whole page down to just the header. But here's where I can hear you saying, yeah, but now we have so many components. Won't that affect performance? Well, a couple of things. First, as I say, we are no longer re-rendering the entire page on any state change. So that's just a huge win right there. And then the second is that components are just functions. And we're already making a lot of function calls, even in the first example I showed. So we're not actually adding a lot more with the functions that we're creating. Don't believe me? Let me show you. So let's go take the original source code for our page. All the way back at the beginning. I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna put that into the official TypeScript, and that's gonna show us what's gonna come out the other side of the transpiler when we give it this TypeScript code. So we have the TypeScript code that we originally had for the page on the left-hand side, and we've got our transpiled code on the right-hand side. And one thing you're gonna notice right away is this huge number of React create element invocations. So anytime you use JSX and you give it a tag, that gets converted into a React create element invocation. So we are already, even in that single component model, doing a ton of function invocations. In fact, actually, we can actually figure out how many we're doing. Let's go and copy that. I'll go down in the terminal. I use pbpaste, I'll grep for function, which is just the function keyword, and run it through the word counter. So we've only got two functions in there. That would be the original homepage function plus that little class names function. But now let's go and look for create element. We got 195 invocations of create element every single time the component is re-rendered. Let's go back to the 04 global state example. 
So we'll copy that. We'll take it over to our TypeScript Playground. We'll transpile it. Now you can see we've got these different components. You have mobile links, mobile menu, header, and so on. So that's the granularized component version. Let's go take that and compare the numbers. Let's take a look at how many functions we've got. We've got 14 functions as opposed to two. So we've got 13 components. Let's see how many create elements we've got. We've got 209 create elements. So if I'm doing my math right, that's 197 function invocations for the original single component example, and then 223 for the well-factored example. And that's just a 13% increase, which is not a lot. Plus you get that really awesome fine-grained rendering, which is the honest real win. So I wouldn't worry about the fact that you're adding a lot of functions as you create new components. Now the final example that is included in the repo is the really well-finished example. This is what I would actually put into production. So there have been some drastic changes. First, the page goes and imports a bunch of different components that have all been broken out into individual files that are listed in the components directory. There's a couple of nav components. There's a bunch of product components. Everything has been taken out and put it into its own component file. And the whole homepage is now, let's see, 37 to 12, so 25 lines long. And I've done a little bit of cleanup to even make it a bit more high speed. And I've done a few more small tweaks to get the fine-grained updating just to where I like it. So now if you do add to cart, you can see that only the cart value updates. Everything else also gets that nice fine-grained atomic update. So this is about as good of a performance as you're going to get. So as I say, there are no hard and fast rules here. But by now, I think you should realize that the number of lines of code isn't the only metric. You need to make sure that your components are performing well and doing that fine-grained updating to get the most out of the React framework. And of course, in the meantime, let me know in the comments if you think I'm right or I'm wrong or somewhere in between. If you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue-collar coder comes out.